Gabriel asks, is it a rule of Bitcoin or an average number based on computation power that blocks are formed every 10 minutes or so? Both. It is a rule of Bitcoin that the average number of computation forms blocks every 10 minutes. So the rule in Bitcoin is the difficulty of doing the calculation is adjusted every two weeks so that the average number of blocks in a period of time is equal to a block every 10 minutes. The way this works is over a period of two weeks there should be 2016 blocks. And therefore we can count the previous two weeks and say how many blocks were in the past two weeks. If the answer is 2016, that means the difficulty of the algorithm and the amount of computation that people are committing to Bitcoin mining is exactly right. It's perfect. Blocks are coming out every 10 minutes, nothing to adjust. Now let's say that we instead of 2016 uh, blocks, we had 2,200. 17 blocks, so we had effectively 10% more blocks. Well, in that case, the network will make the difficulty 10% higher, exactly the same ratio as the number of blocks we had versus the number of blocks we should have, which is 2016. And if that difference is 10%, then the difficulty algorithm will be adjusted by 10%, and as a result, in future, we'll get closer to 10-minute blocks. If instead of 2016 blocks we had uh, 1,800 blocks and we were short by 200 blocks, well then it's about 10% short. We would adjust by about 10% in the difficulty. That calculation happens every 2016 blocks, every two weeks, at exactly the same time, on exactly the same block, and affects the difficulty of the next block across the entire network, every computer of the network puts in the number of blocks it saw over the last two weeks, measures the exact same number, adjusts the difficulty by the exact same amount, and arrives at the exact same answer. And so the entire network switches difficulty for the exact same amount every two blocks, every two weeks. Jimmy has a great question. Is it possible that the blockchain will not proceed or propagate because we come to a point where the difficulty required cannot be satisfied anymore in all of the iterations of the nonce and extra nonce? Yes, in fact, that has already happened. The reason we have extra nonce is because we got to a point where the difficulty could not be satisfied in the nonce. And so an extra nonce had to be changed. There are a number of other things in the block header that can be changed in order to produce more variation in the block header. The most important one, interestingly enough, is the order of the transactions and the types of transactions you include. So let's say you have 2016 transactions or 2050 transactions in your block. Just pick a number there. And these transactions were received and put into the candidate block in a specific order. Well, because of the order of the transactions in the block, they are going to produce a very specific Merkle tree. So 2,000 transactions, each pair of transactions, the first and second transaction, and then the third and fourth transaction, and then the fifth and sixth transaction are hashed together. And then those hashes are hashed together, and then those hashes are hashed together until you get to the Merkle root up the tree. It's a binary tree. And so if you change two transactions at the bottom of the tree, just reverse the order, immediately the calculation all the way up changes, and you get a different Merkle root. So effectively, that's like changing a nonce. You've changed the block header. All you had to do is flip two transactions around and recalculate the Merkle root. And with 2,000 transactions in the block, there's a lot of combinations of how you can order those to produce all kinds of variety in the Merkle root. So reordering transactions is one of the ways that um, miners can vary the header block uh, when they run out of nonce and extra nonce. And in fact, that's already happening. 
In this particular case, the reason it's happening is because of an advantage called ASIC boost, which is a particular shortcut in the SHA-256 algorithm and the calculation of the mid-states in SHA-256. But the point doesn't really matter. The bottom line is that you can still satisfy the difficulty by varying other parts of the block header. And it's very likely that over the next few years, we're going to see a change in the format of the block header. And one of the things that's going to change in the format of the block header is giving more space for nonce, making a bigger nonce with more bits in it. Um, and there's no reason why that can't be done again uh, to continue to increase the difficulty. The amount of difficulty that can be calculated um, with hashes is... Uh, and the, the amount of nonce that's required it can be satisfied. That's not a problem. MJ asks about the Bitcoin death spiral. Some believe that a combination of economic factors, such as a crashing Bitcoin price, or government actions, such as shutting down or outlawing mining, could cause a sudden and sustained reduction in mining cash power. What threat would this pose to Bitcoin? Could it cause a death spiral, as some fear or hope. The death spiral phenomenon is this. Because this is not calculated based on time, it's calculated every 2016 blocks. Now, assume that mining power drops dramatically. Let's say it drops by 50%. And now, at 50% of miners participating, blocks are now coming out every 20 minutes instead of every 10. And because it's every 20 minutes instead of every 10, um, it, it won't take two weeks to recalculate the difficulty to adjust that back to 10 minutes. It will actually take four weeks, because it will take four weeks for 2016 blocks to be produced. So, a sudden and sustained reduced in hashing power will cause a sudden and sustained increase of the time per block, which will cause a sudden and sustained increase of the interval until the next re difficulty retargeting. And of course, some people assume that if that happens, then a lot of miners will say, okay, I'm not making enough profit anymore because the hash rate uh, has dropped by 50% and things are moving a lot slower. So I'm going to turn off my mining, which then causes it to drop even further, which causes it to get even slower, which causes it to drop even further, get even slower, drop even further, even slower, death spiral, it never adjusts. Um, first of all, part of the reason that's unlikely to happen, and we've seen that in, in other chains that have suffered from this kind of sudden re reduction in mining power, is that miners have a much more long-term perspective, meaning that they have an existing investment in equipment, and they usually purchase electricity on long-term plans. They don't pay for it by the week. And so therefore, if they have to wait to become profitable another three months, and they already have the equipment in place, they're not turning it off. Uh, they're going to take a bet that they're going to return to profitability. In fact, if they wait until the difficulty retargets and the difficulty becomes uh, less, it gets easier to mine, then each miner who waits makes more profit. Because in the new scheme, they have a greater percentage of the mining power than they did before. So let's say the mining power dropped by 50%. The miners who stick around and wait for the difficulty retargeting are now twice as profitable after the retargeting. That's a pretty good incentive to stick around. The, the other reason that this is unlikely to happen is that it assumes that in this process, the rest of the network simply sits by idly and no changes are made to the protocol. Argu arguably, if you had such a drastic reduction in hash power that the time to the difficulty retargeting was pushed far, very far, one of the answers, and we've seen this happen in other blockchains, is to change the retargeting algorithm. This happened in Bitcoin Cash, in fact. Um, so there was a, a situation where the difficulty was being retargeted far too often, and a hard fork was made to change the difficulty retargeting algorithm. And so changing the algorithm to make the difficulty be retargeted sooner is something that could be done as long as there's a big enough reason that everybody agrees it must be done. You have to achieve consensus. And in order to avoid a fork, everybody has to agree on the new difficulty retargeting. Otherwise, those who disagree will end up on a different fork. Um, and arguably, yes, this could fork Bitcoin. 
um, but it's more likely that you'll have an overwhelming support for changing the difficulty retargeting algorithm if it becomes a big enough problem. So again, I think the term Bitcoin death spiral in itself produces this fantastic um, dark image. It's a very strong emotionally triggering term, uh, and so people don't think, oh, this is a terrible thing that could happen. The chances of it actually happening are pretty low. Uh, the chances of it happening and nobody doing anything about it to fix it uh, is near zero. And so I don't think we have anything to fear from this situation of difficulty retargeting. Do you think there will ever come a time when the Bitcoin crypto economy is so large that controlling a proportion of the mining capacity will be considered a central bank responsibility and or national security issue, where, for example, the United States, European Union, China, Russia, etc., would be running state-controlled mining operations competing against each other? Or do you think mining will remain in the hands of private enterprises for the foreseeable future? Or perhaps states will seize privately owned mining facilities and forcibly uh, take them into public ownership. Well, um, Colin, here's the thing. Um, there is something to be said about the possibility of state entities taking over private mining facilities and turning them into state-owned enterprises. Now, you would think that. Um, because this is a wide open free market where both energy uh, use and mining um, can be done anywhere where uh, useful electricity or usable electricity, perhaps electricity is difficult to distribute or um, delivered in excess of local demands, um, can be utilized that excess power. Um, you would think that in such a free market, the, the distribution of mining would, would follow free market principles. And if you took it over and turned it into a state-owned enterprise, it is extremely likely that state-owned enterprise would be less efficient than its private uh, counterparts. Uh, and uh, effectively, this would be the state sinking a lot of money into building a failed national in, um, infrastructure and industry. However, um, that would be okay if the production of electricity wasn't, in many cases, highly monopolistic and highly state-owned. So this isn't a level playing field entirely. So there might be some advantages for some state part state entities to uh, nationalize mining uh, and to use that in conjunction with a nationalized uh, energy. Uh, infrastructure in order to gain some strategic advantage. Of course, the ironic thing here is that the strategic advantage in this particular case wouldn't be taking over or changing the rules or trying to interfere with Bitcoin. Because, as I mentioned in a previous answer, that would fail, and it would fail so spectacularly and in such a costly fashion. However, consider it this way. What if the national interest would be to maintain the neutrality of the protocol, to not allow anyone else to take it over, to present um, a level of mining that ensured neutrality by resisting attempts to centralize mining? Uh, that's an interesting possibility. I, I don't think it's entirely out of the question that you might see large uh, state actors eventually doing state level. Um, Mining. I don't think they're going to be very competitive, but they could um, use their control over energy industry uh, to do that. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing uh, to the crypto economy. I don't think it's a bad thing simply because um, they would have to follow the rules like everybody else. And if they tried to break the rules, um, they'd face a catastrophic um, network-wide change of the proof-of-work algorithm. Um, so there's always that, the nuclear option, as you might consider it.